welcome back everybody to Noor Speaks Out. I'm Noor and this channel is all about diaspora stories and African history and on the last episode for this year, um, 2021 for diaspora stories, I am interviewing the very wonderful Ernest, the coach, the teacher, the PT, the everything. That is funny. <laughs> but you'll learn a little bit more about some of the things Ernest has been up to. Um, so if you can, if you don't mind, can you introduce yourself? Um, of course, added onto my wonderful introduction. Um, and tell us a little bit about you, when you came to the UK, how old you were, and where you were from, please. Of course. Hello, guys. So my name is Ernest, like Noreen clearly said. I am very excited to do this interview. Mm. So originally, I came from Liberia in 27 which is about four, uh, 14 years ago and I came with my family my dad used to work at the library embassy so that's how we came mm -hmm. and so I came at the age of 14 years so a teenager yeah. 14. yeah and where in Liberia were your family from so good question so my mom originally from River Cess, so it's another county and my dad is from Rua G, which is another county, but these two counties are in the southern part of Liberia. Okay. But we grew up in Morovia, which is the capital city of Liberia. Okay. So I really only know Morovia. Okay. So if you ask, yeah, I'm a city boy. If you ask me about <laughs> other parts of Liberia, I'll be able to have good geography and history of knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to tell you. But I'm not going to tell you that I've actually been there before. <laughs> yeah, that's another story. Okay, you know where they are, right? But no, <laughs> I know where they are geographically, but okay. I don't know where they are in terms of okay, no, really, let's go now, let's go. I'm going to drive. No, 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 no. Probably I'll have to use my Google map. <laughs> I've not been there before. <laughs> okay, all right, cool. Okay, so when you first came then with your family, I guess it was more your mom and dad's decision, but what was the reason um, your family chose to come? Your parents made the decision to come here. So, yeah, plain and simple answer, my dad got a job at the Liberian Embassy to work there on behalf of the Liberian government, the Liberian people, to represent them in the United Kingdom at the court of St. James. So that's why they call the Liberian Embassy mm -hmm. at the court of St. James. I don't know okay. what that phrase is, but it's a diplomatic phrase that describes the Liberian Embassy. So he was appointed as the first secretary and council at the Liberian Embassy in London or the Court of St. James. Okay, so we need to work out who St. James is. <laughs> you put it. That's on the list. Do you have work for today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll give up whoever I'll do our work. <laughs> okay, okay. So dad got a job in the UK because he was already working in government and then said, okay, let's come over, see how UK life is. Okay, so for you, you lived 14 years in the city, in Liberia. What, how was that for you in terms of, as a young person, spent most of, all of your life in Liberia and then moving over to the UK? How did that, what was your experience of that? Were you sort of coming to London? What was your feeling? What was your expectation when you came, if you had any? So yeah, growing up back in Liberia, so obviously it's very challenging. Um, it's a so-called, according to the World Health Organization, according to the IMF, according to the World Bank, all these organizations, they classify these different countries. It's a so-called third world country, so the, the, the life expectancy, I think it's about 54 or 60 years now. Um, in terms of the income capacity as, as people are living there, it's, 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 been, it's very, very low. Mm -hmm. And I think people live on $1 per day, which is really, really low compared to Western countries. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 85% of the population or more is in poverty. So living there was quite tough, mm -hmm. but you have to get on with life. For me personally, my family have faith in Christ, so that really helped us mm -hmm. to be able to fall back on that. But one thing about the population there, people are very generous, they are very together. Mm -hmm. However, we had a civil war as well, so they living there with the civil war, with the poverty, with the lack of opportunity. Yeah. It was almost like hell on earth, but by God's grace, we were able to survive all the storm of, of life there 
and it gave you what we call determination, tenacity. It gave you for you to be able to define your life, for yeah. you to be purpose driven. So coming to the UK, it was quite a straightforward thing. In, in, in order for me to adapt or adjust, we spoke English. I follow football, I follow the Backlist Premier League. So that was a very clear uh, thing I could settle in quickly. Okay. Because football is a unifying force across the world. Yeah. The language of football, I support Chelsea. So oh. coming to London, Chelsea is a Stamford Bridge. <laughs> yeah, it was almost like a dream come true. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. So you're living your best life. <laughs> <laughs> so did you find it easy then to sort of adjust to British culture because you already spoke English, you already love football, which means most boys in school loved you already. Yes. <laughs> Although Chelsea would have been a problem. But <laughs> but yeah. That's the only bad thing. <laughs> but are you saying that on the whole, like you didn't struggle with the adjustment because of how difficult things were in Liberia? Yeah, that's what so how difficult things were in Liberia. So coming here, I came here with a purpose, I came here with a dream, I came here with a plan. So I didn't really mind whether there were going to be a few hiccups here and there. There were a few hiccups here and there, but it was nowhere near in comparison to what we went through back home in Liberia. So it was almost like a scratch on the back, I'm like, oh, what's this? Mm. Yeah, because, yeah, people may laugh at their accent, but that's, that's nothing compared to what we went through back in Liberia. Because I had a vision, I had a plan, but by God's grace, I've been able to continue to execute those to the letter. And I'm very... Hard working person, I wrote to the letter. I call it a grinding out. Okay. <laughs> it's an American phrase actually. Yeah. And there's a phrase that I usually use, which is you may be knocked down in life, you are never knocked out. Mm. And and yeah, obviously going to school here was very very, very good as well because you have all the resources there compared to overseas yeah. where there's no resource, there's no books, and you have to if you have homework, you have to search for books here and there. Everything here is given on the plate. I yeah. like it's an opportunity to make my dream become a reality. I mm. have no excuse not to succeed. Mm. That's how I saw life then. That's how I see life now. Okay, okay. so let's but <laughs> <laughs> because when I was fourteen, I don't think I no, that's not true. I had a plan. I was meant to be a doctor. That didn't work out. It's fine. But <laughs> what was your plan at fourteen? Coming from again, you just moved. Most of your family are back home, presumably, right? Yeah, most of my, my extended family back home, yeah. Right? So what did you have in mind? Like, your mum and dad probably had their own agenda for you guys, like for you and your fat, like your sisters, right? But what was your plan at 14? What did you think to accomplish in the UK? So football was, was a very big driving force in my life. And when I came quickly, I started playing football. And at school, I got noticed straight away doing PE lessons. And everybody wanted me to be on their team. Okay. And they saw how athletic I was, but I also really good academically in many of the subjects and I knew generally a lot of things across general knowledge of a lot of different fields. We really shocked people really at 14 years old, so just know everything, know what he wants, he had this plan, and he's I'm like he's already in his twenties, he already set out. Mm. And I was also big involved in school politics as well. Okay. So Yes, I wanted to become a footballer as well, but I also knew that if I don't become a footballer, I can become like a African where I can use politics in a good way to add values to other people's lives and have a positive impact as well in, in that respect. Okay. Yeah, so I had this general plan, if football don't work, I don't become like a politician okay. or get into education as well in terms of sporting side. Mm -hmm. And looking back, looking now, all those things actually on, on, on the track and I'm actually doing majority 99% of those things okay. you know even, even my job I do at the moment I teach physical education so I'm deeply involved in education mm -hmm. but also I'm advocating for schools to get more funding I'm, I'm, I'm helping children from less privileged background I'm helping children across the board as well mm -hmm. so which is kind of like a little bit of political stuff going on there. Okay. I have helped the homeless people as well. So everything I'm doing now is not a surprise. It's something that I always knew that God gave me a purpose and a plan mm -hmm. I was going to do. 
it's just that it happened a very different way yeah yeah because one plus one is two but in terms of life it's not two mm. it could be three it could be four it could be whatever number you think it is yeah you've achieved a lot of what you plan to achieve so you you're a teacher now plus you're doing the other stuff on the side that's kind of political which i'm guessing you've got from dad a little bit yeah which is <laughs> good yes um yes thank you so <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, but that's amazing. It's nice that you're you had that sort of mindset from a young age, but then also made the right steps in order to accomplish the things that you wanted to achieve, which is very amazing. Okay, so can you tell us or run through some of the difficulties um, that you experienced as a young person, or even um, later on, that you felt like things that you've come across so far in the UK. Of course, so one of the things I quickly realized living in the UK where I came as a young person was it's a blessing but also a challenge as well. Now, living as a diplomat, dependent of dip diplomat child, mm -hmm. it meant that people saw you in a different context. Now, generally the cliche of diplomats or the children, they are rich people, they have lots of money, they have, they have seven, seven in food and they have drivers. Mm -hmm. It is true. But it wasn't reality for us okay. because there are some places across the world, there are some government across the world, they are very chaotic, mm. they, they don't have any system in place, they don't really care about their own staff, their own people that work for them mm. and unfortunately we were in that situation but which was tough mm. but which just motivated me more by God's way to be the best I can be because I'm still grateful to God for them for giving us the opportunity to come yeah. and though they didn't play their part in terms of supporting us financially and other things that they should have done yeah. but the fact that we was here I realized that I have an opportunity to make my dream become a reality mm -hmm. I have no excuse, I'll keep using that phrase, I have no excuse mm -hmm. though things were tough yeah. and things even are tough now there is still a window of opportunity God has given me you know, the children of Israel when they were in in the wilderness, they they were just looking sh in a short box, like in a box. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to fall into that trap. I saw beyond the adversity. I saw beyond the problem. I, mm -hmm. I look at all the good stuff that was growing up, and I used my energy to power through. That's why, I, when, I, when I was even in school or in college, I was doing all the extracurricular activities as well, just to make myself the best. I could be all the other weaknesses, the areas were improved, but needed to improve on. Mm -hmm. I, I was just grinding it out, doing courses here and there, hanging out with the right people who would be able to help me, to mm -hmm. push me forward. Mm -hmm. You know, I was relentless. I used all my summers improving myself. I love volunteering here, volunteering there. Yeah, if you look at my qualification in terms of my portfolio, it's quite rich. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I will not stop learning until. I am with Christ, you know, mm -hmm. because again, I have an opportunity to make my dream become a reality. And they sadly, regrettably, the richest place on the planet is the graveyard. Many people there didn't realize the dream. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be like them. I have no excuse. Mm -hmm. Even within the most difficult circumstances you may find yourself in, like we were, government not really fully supporting, yeah being diplomats, you honor immigration, exemption, but that what that means as well, you cannot get then EMA, you cannot get student finance. I have to wait for six years before I go to uni. I didn't fold my hands and say, you know what, I cannot go to uni. Oh God, why you done this to us? Mm -hmm. There were always alternatives. I always say to people, there is an alternative route to get to Terminal 5 at Heathrow Airport. <laughs> You, you don't need to take the PDD line, you yeah. can take other route to go there. Yeah. You might take free bus, you might take longer, but you still get to your, de to your destination. Mm -hmm. They're not going to ask you well, how, how long you took to, 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 to get there to become successful. Mm -hmm. You just have to become successful. Mm -hmm. So though it took time, though it was pain, though, though it was tough, but those mm -hmm. things just make you the best you can be. It gave you foundation, you know? Mm -hmm. It gave you character, and God was building character in me. And that's why I realized quickly, and because I realized this at an earlier, younger age, yeah. it saved me lots of stress. Mm. Because I see a lot of people, they are still going around in circle, they are not bleeding the system. The number one, the system has this issue, yeah. they have institutional racism and stuff, which is 
exist in the UK, but I'm not going to spend all my energy on that. Mm. I also see as there's a window opportunity I still have. Mm. Once I'm the, I become the best I can be, there will be opportunity given to me. Mm. It, 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 the opportunity will come up, but if I'm not good at what I'm doing, why should I get that in the first place? Yeah. And that's that, and that's where I, I, I have problem with people just cry out racism or this or inequality. Where some of them are they're not even the best mm. of what they do. Mm. And they, they just want things to be given to them. Yeah. No, I don't want things given to me. I want to work for things and then things will fall into this place. And, mm. the, and there's a saying that says your your skill set will open room for you. Mm. And your, your skill set open room for you. And one one thing I also will say to People who migrate your hair, like for my age or younger, don't settle for less. Mm. Be the best you can be. Don't just settle for less things. Start, you need to start from somewhere, don't get me wrong, but build it up. Don't be comfortable in your comfort zone. Mm. There is no dream that is built in comfort zone. Mm. Dreams are only built when you are out of your comfort zone. Sorry, that is the blunt truth. You will not be what God called you to be if you keep doing the same thing that keep you in your comfort zone. Yeah. You need to make yourself at ease. You need to hang around people who are going to challenge you, who are going to bring the best out of you. Okay. If you can get around some friends who are just going to keep it, keep keep you happy, and you're not going to grow, mm. you're going to be just be going around this circle, going to party. Party is good, but guess what? Party don't pay our bills. That's true. Party don't don't resolve issues. Don't resolve the immigration situation. Mm. Party don't. Don't give your children a better life. Mm. What gave you better life? You need to read. You need to do courses. You need to have a balanced life. Hang around the right people. Okay. Preach it. That's <laughs> <laughs> all I can say. <laughs> we spoke about, or you mentioned the two difficulties so far. Government not supporting your family as you guys came here. Issues in terms of access to like help while you were studying. Um, as a like an older teenager, what other difficulties would you say you faced? So like rent issues as well. So the government are not sending our rent on time. That means we're going problem with the landlord. That means we will pay our rent late. That means we're going rent arrears. That means we got evicted from our property as well, which will have impact on your credit records and etc. etc. Et mm. All those things, for example, that I would I just explained. It's a very sad uh, circumstances there, but again, you have to see beyond that. You have to see what God is doing as well. Mm. You could sit there and be sorry for yourself, or you could look around and see all the opportunity there. But don't get me wrong, I'm not being denied of these things. Yeah. These are painful things. That's these hard. are things that leave scars on you. Yeah. But you look at the scar and say, no, I want to have a better life than that. Mm. You know? I don't Before want to. You we go into preaching pastor because <laughs> <laughs> <This is funny. laughs> <laughs> i know it's coming but again for a lot of people that's quite traumatic yeah and you would have been what maybe like 17 or something when when you were evicted from the um the embassy the liberian embassy well what are you evicted from the liberian embassy it was something that happened more later on okay. so i would say uh around 2018 Okay. So you could say more recent time. Okay. Yeah. It was coming, especially how they were playing with our rent mm -hmm. situation. And that's why we kept on moving from one place to the next in, in terms of primary renting uh, situation. And we're in this property for up to five years. Then a blessing, he had enough. Mm -hmm. And when the rent was no longer coming on time, or well, he lost the rent arrears, mm -hmm. he had to give her eviction. The eviction, I will say this, people think I'm crazy. The eviction was a blessing in disguise. <laughs> it's a <Explain> paradox. Because <laughs> the eviction sounds like homelessness. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like cold and hungry to me. <laughs> so, so, your whole family was asked to leave then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were allowed to leave and, and but it was a blessing in disguise. So, what that means is that gave up our tools of independence. Mm. That means we are no longer interdependent on the government at the time i mean the government the foreign government that my dad works for mm. so that means we didn't want the situation have changed we're not depending on them to pay our rent any longer mm. if you have your independent you can make decisions for your own life 
I just forgetting who who said that, but there's I think it's another Ibrahim Lincoln or some that's from one of them. Mm. Independent is very important. Interdependent is good for certain circumstances, but then you have to grow out of it. Mm. And I think God wanted us to grow out of that. Inter- depending on our government to pay, continue to pay our rent. Mm. It was a time. Yes, it happened through an eviction, yeah. but it was a time to get out of it and become the best you can be. Mm. Now you know. Now you're sure you work. You pay your rent. You in control of that. Yeah. Versus like you depending on another external entity that sometimes the rent is delayed, sometimes it's not set on time. You having this mm. conversation with the landlord. It's not. It's not nice. It's not fair on both parties. Mm. So that had to stop. That had to. We have to grow out of that okay. and grow birth up out of that. Okay. Nice. So most of the difficulties then were more so in ter- like were more the cause of sort of. The lack of aid that you were getting from the library Yeah, it, I would say hey, it's something that we're entitled to. Yeah. So something oh, yeah. that it was their responsibility, really. It was their responsibility to pay our rent because that works Since for them. Time, yeah. yeah, and yet they were not meeting that those responsibility mm-hmm. adequately, and effectively, and it caused lots of stress, lots of impact on my family as well. And then of course, they could even help us with our tuition fees as well because we couldn't get. Because of our immigration status at the time, we were not eligible for student finance. So and they don't pay for your you and for no. the children of the people they've employed. To, no, they don't pay. To study in this country. No, the the foreign government don't pay. Okay. So we had to find our own way, find alternative. And six years I didn't go to university, but again, it was an opportunity to develop other skills, to do alternative education, professional qualification, equivalent to degrees, and I done that. Mm. I was in, into filming, I run a fil- film and media business, mm-hmm. um, doing documentary, uh, live show, birthday party, wedding video, music video. I develop my skill set in that. At the same time, I was developing my sporting career as well. After I realized that, no, I don't really want to go into becoming a footballer because some personal things happen in my family. I want to spend my energy training children, young people, and adults, inspiring them. Mm-hmm into sports and that's how I went through the route of getting my badges, getting lots of different qualifications mm. in terms of coaching and teaching sports in mm. schools and other sector of life. Okay. So I used my time very wisely to upgrade, upskill myself. The mm. sixth year I couldn't go to uni and stuff. I didn't just sat there and feel sorry for myself. Again it was a it was an opportunity to grow. It was mm. not a place where you start to cry and regret. Mm. Oh why don't get me wrong, I would prefer after uni, sorry, after college, go straight to uni, no hair this. Life doesn't work like that. Mm. I realized quickly. And again, because I I realized this at an earlier age, it saved me lots of stress. Mm. To be stressful about things, to be thinking a lot about things. It just helped me to just push forward, move on. Mm. You know? And so that kind of upbringing in or everything that you guys experienced things before coming. Yes. That gave you a perspective. Already. Yes, it, it, it gave me a perspective. Yeah. In every bad situation, there, there is a way out and there, there are opportunities to grow, there are opportunities to develop. Okay, I'm liking it. Okay, cool. We're developing. So, added to, I guess, the issues that you had with um, like studying and not being able to access like EMA, which is for students at like 17, 18, 19, and then not being able to go to university. Um, like like you planned and had sort of delayed university for like six years. Um, can you can we talk a little bit then about sort of UK home of home office immigration of course. policy? So <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go into detail. No, no, no. Yes, so, you know, <laughs> what? But how did you find? How are you finding um, the home office and that process of you know getting stay and getting access to these things? Um, like um, that you would be like would help you obviously complete your qualifications but then would also make life a little bit easier indefinitely to remain all of that kind of stuff what would you say um, about the home office what i'll say about the home office is the home office policies is really based on some of the arrangement and the agreement they have the uk government have with different countries across the world mm-hmm. so now a lot of people will see our segregation and racism because there are some nationality may not face some headache or hiccup mm. compared to other people. What do I mean by that? So, 
when you go a part of the EU, for example, the immigration rules for them were quite different from people outside the EU, if that's clear. But the EU were able to, well, to agree what we call consensus with the UK compromise and have some benefit here and there. Mm -hmm. And one thing I realized, like where I thought we originally in other countries as well, they didn't were not able for some reason to have those things in place with the UK government. Mm -hmm. And because of that, their citizens coming over here had to face the full wrath of the Home Office yeah. immigration rules. Now, is it unfair? Of course it's unfair. You see, what, what can you do about it? You, to, to do something about it, you have to go to the original cause of it. Originally, when all these things were put into place, the different government did not do their homework to make sure that their interests was covered. Mm -hmm. So the EU, the EU uh, made sure that the people was covered. That's why even the EU settlement scheme is free. Mm -hmm. Now, some people will say is, some people have been treated badly. Yes, I will not agree with that. But now in comparison to those people from outside the EU, who have to go through the full block, the, the, the process is so expensive. Yeah. If you don't seek legal advice, the home office is going to chuck you out of here. Mm. If you cannot prove that you have contributed enough to the UK, if you cannot prove that you are so called good residents and blah, 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 mm. you, you are in trouble. The home office is going to make life so difficult for you because mm. I've, I, I went through that experience as well. Every two years, we have to renew our visa and as a diplomat children you have to for our situation you have to be in full-time education mm -hmm. so imagine i'm being full-time education every other two years but the thing that you have to work full-time as well to have that balance is the good thing was we're not paying for the visa extension because of your don't the diplomatic arrangement between the uk government and the Liberian government mm -hmm. now we're standing we still have to prove that we're in full-time education so yeah, and that came to an end in 2017 mm -hmm. when we, according to the immigration rules, when you live here for 10 years, go keep me as children, so we have to live here for 10 years. If you come here as adult, it's more of a five years route, and then you can apply for indefinite leave to remain. Okay. So, like I said, but generally speaking, the immigration rules, how it impact people outside at the time, the rest of the world is, is so tough. Mm. Okay, you need to have money, yeah. you need to seek legal advice, don't be naive, you need to seek legal advice and you need to you need to contribute. It may sound a cliche what I'm saying, you've mm. got to contribute. You may be working your so-called nine to five, that may not be enough. Mm. Maybe you volunteer at other places, get good character reference, don't get involved in silly things to get mm. criminal records because you, they may use that against you. Yeah. I'm telling you, hello, it's, it's, it's very clear. <laughs> now, you know, ideal situation, that shouldn't be the case, but because of how the immigration rules work, mm. they tend to look for every single fault. Mm. I was even told that they didn't, they didn't think I was deemed a uh, wealthy individual to, to, to be here. It was like, like the worthy group. individual. Yeah, no, no. Wow. In the public interest to be here. I haven't contributed enough or show it, prove it. Indirectly, so that's, that's what they're saying to me. You don't have a criminal record or anything. No. You have to now, on top of just doing ordinary life and yeah. working and paying taxes, yes. you have to show that you are an asset to this yeah, nation. Yeah, exactly. That's the key one. You have to show you're an asset to, 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 to the UK. And that, that's where Home Office is. Taxes aren't enough. <laughs> yeah, not enough, apparently. So Home Office is going beyond that. Okay. Um, but, okay, you can't sit there and just cry about it. As much as we want the rules to change to be fair, to treat everybody the same, mm -hmm. in the meantime, you need to make sure you, you seek legal advice. Mm -hmm. You also need to make sure that you're doing extra things to make your case, your application stronger. Mm -hmm. And follow the rules. Don't do any dodgy things. Don't, for example, get married for papers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They know those things. Some people might be successful. Don't go that route. Even that route was offered to me. I reject it. Mm -hmm. Go to the proper route. And speaking from a Christian perspective, trust God and do what you need to do. And things will be successful by the grace of God. But don't take short routes and short cuff because mm -hmm. you're just going to put yourself in deeper problem, deeper trouble as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, do, do the extra stuff. Work hard, save money, do what you need to do. Don't involve yourself in some silly, crazy stuff that you're gonna develop as a criminal records and then you're gonna be in a legal fight of your life with the yeah. home office. And they don't care. They will they will be 
do the Azila enough, passionate enough to get get people out of here. Yeah. I saw that sound. That it is really the is. truth, you know. And so, look after yourself. Have a plan. Have a goal. Have a vision. Mm. And to that, you'll be able to overcome these obstacles that home office, these barriers that they put there just to please people from other political aspirations really and viewpoint to, to say they are tough on immigration mm -hmm. when every year immigration keeps going up and up but that's a separate conversation <laughs> for another time <laughs> you can see where I'm going with this now <laughs> so even in my own personal circumstances as well originally they said to me no my application and mm -hmm. it's came of all these things oh you you're not wealthy individual yeah I don't have criminal record but how mm -hmm. then they also said things like you haven't couldn't be there enough so I have to I have to provide tons of evidence and I just went for it and my solicitor was amazing Penny was amazing she just helped me we came out with a plan and with the barrister as well mm -hmm. and we overwhelmed the home office I would say that we just send them everything even Christmas cards <laughs> we take you back just send it to them you know <laughs> because it's your life you know it's a life you have to see our life and death you know mm -hmm. Um, you spend most of your life here already. Why should you want to go back just because they say that you're not deemed or you haven't come to be there enough here? Yeah. So you have to see it as that. If you have to see it as you have to justify it and you have to take the fight to them as well, mm. you know, in a good way. And, and if you do that, you'll be successful. Mm. And by God's grace, they reverse their decision. Mm. I appreciate all those who do support me as well with prayers, with letters. And other things even financially as well mm -hmm. and we're able to overcome that obstacles mm -hmm. you know and we trust god for other people who go into the same process do not i repeat myself do not take short routes mm -hmm. using the so-called relationship routes or marriage route to get that mm -hmm. some people will be successful not so some yeah and i'll argue that's not a way of god for you mm -hmm. god will go enough for you to go through that route mm -hmm. sorry but i'm quite old-fashioned in that context go through the proper route mm -hmm. you know and if you do that there'll be people there who will be able to support you mm -hmm. yeah so with all the things that you face you and your family um who were some of the people that gave you support encouragement who were they of course i'm not gonna go to i'm not gonna give you no that day <laughs> of course yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i'm gonna i'm gonna say this so First and foremost, I'm grateful to God for, for giving me the resources to my family as well, for my dad and my mom for bringing us here mm -hmm. um, because I know other family will have abandoned them or would mm -hmm. not even abandon them but just leave them back home mm -hmm. and yeah, but the opportunity was given to us and I bless them for, for that mm -hmm. and after coming here, I've been strongly integrated with our church system so the church been huge day huge day uh gonna be there a lot to us all the processes i have explained from 2007 to present mm -hmm. here in my current church they're gonna be there so much to the to the integrated part of the i'll say the battle with the home of his mm -hmm. their prayers their support financially even encouragement wise they have been incredible i don't want to go too names but they know themselves mm -hmm. and even as a corporate organization my employers, people who I work with in other sector of education, people I went to uni with as well, or college, writing character references, uh, my current school as well, where I work, they've been amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the governing board, um, the head teacher, the deputy head teacher, and okay. everybody there, some colleagues there who wrote for me as well, mm -hmm. which has been incredible. Um, there are even some of the parents who are willing to write as well or speak oh. if this were going to go to to tribunal but I got to it, they did not go to tribunal they reversed the decision just to put on the record and and they changed the decision to a positive one which is I'm happy I'm pleased and just praising God already mm -hmm. yeah but uh, wasting a course of this is the, the best ever mm -hmm. Penny was incredible I would recommend her and then what? And then where? And then she don't mind me calling her name because of course <laughs> Okay, good It's bring her opportunity as well, which yes. is great And what she does is, is for the public And the barrister as well was amazing as well mm -hmm. um, Yeah, the whole support structure there um, 
other people I knew from other colleges I went to as well, they supported me. Career advisor, he doing himself, incredible man. Um, a uh, couple of my friends wish I'd we done the homeless project together. Yeah, they supported me with letters and yeah, they know how stressful this is. Um, mm. I have colleagues in the church here as well, sisters and brothers who supported me as well. I have somebody I call my mentor, he's been incredible, he knows himself. He's a, uh, yeah, I've really learned a lot from him. You mean, he has a mature man now, he's still so passionate and energetic, which is quite incredible. I just draw so much energy from him because he's like, He's so, he just sees life in a very different perspective. He asks this very interesting question. What inspires you? What, what is the motivation? What do you wake up every, every morning, you know? And he asks those very key integrated questions. And I always ask myself this question as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this question of accountability as yeah. well, to bring account to things. And he was so incredible. And the list goes on. Of course, my, my, my family as well was very supportive. My brother as well. My sister have been very, very supportive as my mom and dad who always praying for us and supporting us as well. Mm-hmm. Which been very good. I can go on and on with this, yeah? <laughs> yeah <that's cool. laughs> They've been yeah. amazing structure, yeah, and, uh, and support and and by God's grace I have not slept. What do I mean by that? I done for my hands. Okay. I've been working too, I've been paying taxes. Mm-hmm. I have done lots of extra stuff as well. Yeah. Give myself a chance, you know, against the home office and, and every other thing I had to face. Yeah. And so I have barriers of even the league I work for, Region Park Youth League, I got a lot of support there as well. Mm-hmm. The charity I work for, FYA, uh, All Sports London, I call it them. Um, yeah, Try Time, my business partner for the business I run along with them in Victoria Park. Mm-hmm. Um, all the colleagues that I work with. Um, it, it, the list, I think it's, it's, it's endless, it's, it's endless. Yeah, like, on every yeah I have side. support, <laughs> I have what, 30 plus character references. Yeah, wow. <laughs> it's quite like crazy. Um, yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate those who really believe in me, even at Mora Primary School. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and continue to support me, continue to, yeah, to make the school the best the school can be. Um, I'm, I'm there as well to support them as well what I want to do as well. And I'm very, really grateful for that. I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Thank you guys. So nice. Okay. So in terms of so would you then, having gone through everything you've gone through, would you recommend then for other people from Liberia, other African people to sort of make that move um like you did what what would you say um, or would you recommend first of all, yes or no, then what would what advice would you give? Yes, of course, I recommend people. Mm-hmm. I know people fleeing from conflict, fleeing from natural disa- disaster. So I know that from that perspective, mm-hmm. they should find safe haven overseas. I recommend that. Mm-hmm. And obviously, hopefully that they can have a strong case to whom they can have compassion upon them. Mm-hmm. Refugees and asylum seekers in that perspective. Now, those who come in through the other route of the immigration system as well, I would say make sure you the immigration rules have changed since the UK have left the EU so they have more of a point-based system now mm. where you need to be qualified in terms of qualification wise mm. and yeah you need to have some decent qualification okay. and the health service need people doctors nurses they need people so if you have qualification in that you have a chance to come here mm. the hospitality industry as well some sector needs people people in the hotel and etc etc even temporary workforce such as those who work on the farms, like yeah. picking up apples and stuff. Yeah, don't get me started on that because we, the UK still have bigger problem, lack of people from here yeah. wanting to do those jobs. It's a reality, it's not, Facts. yeah, it's, it is. Mm. And I understand why some people don't want to do it, but obviously there are people who want to come, even for temporary, during the summer to yeah. have something to, to work and have different experience in another country. Mm. They can laugh at that. I also know that people who have talent like football skills and other stuff, yeah, yeah in a different route they can take, get a scout to scout them to come. And yeah, that route that is always there. Yeah. You have to be accepted that they're talented. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And you have those category of people, or those who have money and they can apply. The immigration rules have two years for them or three years for them. Mm. And they invest like a million pounds or two. But that that is for people who yeah. have money and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So for the coins. <laughs> 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 Deep pockets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so you'd say yes, but get your skills up. So get a certi- like certificates. Yeah, get your skills up. Well, get your skills up. And the other option where the spouse visas as well is there. But of course, the person that applying needs to have their house in order, needs to be working, mm-hmm. needs to be, yeah, you need to be in the system, you need to be contributing yeah. to, to have a case to be able to bring either your spouse here or your wife, your husband here mm-hmm. or your children here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or if you have a business you want to bring staff here as well, yeah, seek legal advice. Okay. Yeah, don't listen to ESA and listen to that. Oh, this is what I don't know. Seek legal advice. Legal okay. advice is very, very important. Okay. More important is seek racing and coast visitor. Okay. Penny will be there to help you. Penny. <laughs> yes, Penny, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right then. So, for you, do you have any plans then of maybe going back to Liberia or, or going somewhere else even if that's on your agenda? What, like, of course. Moving forward, what do we think? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an international person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't see borders. I don't see uh, boundaries. So I'll always go back to Liberia, for example, to contribute, to have a, to bless those children, to the people there mm-hmm. in my former se- uh, primary and secondary school, which is St. Mike uh, Catholic Elementary and High School. I like to go there, maybe teach for a, a month there or so mm-hmm. for free. Yeah. Uh, PE lessons and other stuff, doing mentoring with the guys there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and helping out them. But then I also have to expand that to other parts of the world already. Okay. Give them my time, do some missionary work there as well. Okay. More important also sharing the gospel of Christ because through the gospel, the love of God is what really helping to be able to achieve these things and be able to look at life in a very different perspective. Mm-hmm. Really. So you would you would go back, but not necessarily to, to stay. Just uh, well, you, it's UK. Like, it's, so now. I would say it's, it's on a, I will I will answer that question like I have a, I have two homes really. Mm-hmm. The UK obviously because I live here long enough now. But also back home where if I would go on holiday, I, I'd have my holiday home as well mm-hmm. then. But then, who said I would get married to as well? It, it could be for another country, that could be another home as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm not putting myself in this box where... You're a citizen of the world. <laughs> yes, I'm a citizen of the world. That's very important. And I'm a very adaptable person, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, you've been here for quite a few years now. How many years have you been here? I've lived here for up to 14 years. 14. Next year, I'll be 15. Really? Okay, yeah. so it came 14, been here 14 years now. Yeah. Very nice. What do you miss about um, Liberia being back home? Well, one of the things I miss about there, you have this, this amazing freedom mm-hmm. where you can see children growing up where, uh, yeah, you don't have all these things. And it's quite a good thing, really, for me grew up there. You have a community looking after a child or children, mm. which is a really good thing. Yeah. You know, of course, we don't have that, which is understandable. So, but I miss that because you have discipline, mm. which is very key to having a successful life, ready, mm-hmm. and you don't take things for granted. Yeah. I also look back as well, like, oh my days, now you people are wasting food. Even me, I'm guilty of that as so, well. You're wasting food, and look, oh, Christmas just yeah. passed, and yeah. but I always remember you people didn't have enough mm. in the, in the managing and trying to ends meet. Mm. And we have so much, and we, and we are so yes. completely like, criticizing the government. Yeah, yeah. That, where the government there is useless, really, mm. and, and, and they don't really look after the people effectively and adequately. Mm. I miss that. I also miss my friends just playing football with barefoot, mm. no shoes, nothing on the beach or in, the, in our little yeah, and just playing, mm. having fun, natural God given talent. <laughs> yeah, just going out, going out in the rain, yeah. in the sunshine. Yeah, we I just... mean, there's plenty of rain here because you know, <laughs> barefoot. <laughs> no, well, you don't do that on a 4G page. <laughs> oh, the vision. <laughs> it's, 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 it's so mean, different. It's cold. <laughs> yeah. I love my cool balls. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, that, like, that sort of. The food as well, though. The food, oh, yeah. Okay. The food, uh, yeah. Because you're not going to have all the ingredients, even those food that have been transmitted, it's not all the ingredients you have. Mm. The food there, yeah, it's amazing, it's naturally gone, yeah, it's good for your health as well. Mm. You have lots of pre-processed foods here, mm. and you have to really be careful what you're eating as well. Yeah, That's another separate topic I can talk about, but <laughs> yes. And That's personal that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the food, is there. and the people there as well, and mm. in terms of 
the gospel, church expansion, and how the life of churches there is, is so much different, you know. Mm -hmm. well, in what way? In what way? I think the, the gospel there, I would tell you, is, is much easier to expand. And mm -hmm. because all the people is in poverty, so they are more receptive to looking for alternative in terms of whereas here we have so much. Mm -hmm. We technically, I would say this, we technically don't need God in our life, like most, most people will tell you, because they are successful, they yeah. have more than enough. Whereas there, it's, a, it's on the contrary, really, 85 to 90 percent of people live in, the pof in poverty. So they are more open to the Bible, they're more open to just seeing Christ, more open to seeing miracles. There are many, many miracles I can list. Me and my family experience living there back home, mm -hmm. where you don't have nothing, and God just sends somebody to, to bless you and stuff. Mm -hmm. You still experience that here, but it's just different as well. Yeah. Because the economics uh, of the two is, is so much different, you, you cannot really compare it. One is so, like you said, like I said, a country, the IMF mm. or World Bank, one is tear world country and one is not just a developed country but the part of the G's, seven regions, the, the seven, including Russia, eight richest country on the planet, mm. uh, G20, the UK is part of all those block of countries. So yeah. it's not, it's, it's, it's not a little comparison you can really make yeah. as well. That's why even me coming here, I don't, I don't take things for granted. Mm. That's why, yeah, I keep grinding it out. I keep working hard. Be okay. the best I can be, right? Mm -hmm. Any other thing that you miss? Um, yeah. Obviously, the community there is is together, and you can live in the UK. And I realize that oh, UK is mu much bigger than Liberia. Liberia is only four to three thousand square miles, so mm -hmm. it's much smaller. Yeah. You realize you, you know almost everybody and stuff. That Anna, it doesn't mean I know everybody, but it seems like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so vast, it's so massive and, and, and stuff. So That's yeah. weird that you yeah. think that this is a big country because it's <laughs> so tiny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, because I'm still in the On the map, especially, we're like, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm with you, that makes sense. Yeah, and because when I was there, I was a child, so I'm still in the bubble because now I don't think it's, it's like that. Mm -hmm. Where you can just go, you spend a lot of time with your friends. I know that all those people. They are men and women now, and most of them even have their own family now. So they're not spending that time that we used to be spending with our children. So yeah. that that's my own little cliche there, really, because things are not like that now. Yeah. Because everybody has grown up. Yeah. But when I was there as children, we spent so much time hanging out and this and that. Which I know is the same thing here. Mm -hmm. But as you grow up, mm -hmm. people are, people have responsibility now. You know, <laughs> people have to people need to work and pay bills and stuff. I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. And then, all right, last question then. What would you, what advice would you give to other African people here in the UK living in diaspora, other Liberians that are here, or just anybody in the diaspora in the UK, in London? Um, what would you say to them? What words would you give? Well, work hard. Uh, obviously, uh, for perspective of Bible based, I would say, of course, if you haven't seen Christ in your life, seek Christ, he will make give you true meaning to your life. Mm. But also, if you're lacking skills, if you need to go back to school, whether it's college, sixth form, uni, do it. Mm. If you need to do alternative education, online courses, do it. Mm. You try your best to upgrade yourself. Do not get caught up in just settling down for less. Mm. Be the best you can be. There are already stereotypes out there, but immigrant and this and that be the best you can be be that light that shall be that example you know if you need to seek legal advice do it don't just let it drag on you know it's not good seek legal advice stay out of problem you know mm -hmm. stay out of problem stay out of confrontation uh, as best as you can you know hang out the right crowd of people don't waste time with time wasters mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah <laughs> exactly. Or, or else you can mix old wine to a new wine scheme because they probably even the bus. Mm. And, and, and yeah, half. Why are you here? Why did you come to the UK? Why is the purpose? Why do you wake up every morning? It's basically, like asking life purpose driven question, really. Mm. So, yeah, that's it, really. You, you need to be the best you can be, you know. Don't settle for less and every bad situation come to give you opportunity to grow. There's always growth in that. 
eviction there is growth in eviction even losing the relative there are growth there mm. and even during the difficult time of covid don't allow covid to overshadow your life mm. there is life with covid sorry we, we we need to live with covid i'm afraid we cannot shut down the whole system just because of covid mm. learn to live with covid be the best you can be if you need to start a new career, start a new career, seek the right advice, but do not just settle there. Do not just sit down there and complain and cry and, and just, there's a place where you can criticize the government, you can hold them to account, mm. but you need to criticize yourself. You need to hold yourself to account. You need to be the best you can be. You need to up, upgrade yourself. Unless you're doing those things, yeah. you have no right to be criticizing the government. Because the government had to do their best, the system is in place. Mm. The platform is here. Yeah. What excuse do you have? I'm not saying things are easy, don't get me wrong. I'm not in this cliche war, mm. but I'm also saying to you, there are opportunities here. Make good use of it. You know, if you have young people out there, tell them, talk to them to come out of the gang culture. A lot of so called a lot of people die, black people die for, for them to get their freedom and they are in gang, mm. they need to step up. That's how I speak, guys. Step up. Carry knives, carry gun for what? Why your, your black uh, grandfather die for on the street when they were fighting against racism, apartheid? Let's go on. Huh? Did they die for you not to be carrying knife and carry gun because you don't like this person because they did this, they did that? Is that good enough to carry knife to carry gun? I'm very passionate about this subject. Think twice now. How do you think your your forefather would think about you? You carry knife, you carry gun, killing each other, killing young people here and there. Selling drugs, is that why it comes down to now? You guys need to wake up. Like my coach you just used to say to us, oh, somebody need a slap to wake up. Sorry, this I'm I give you a safeguard in child protection. But some people need a slap to wake up. A psychological slap, you know, to wake them up. What would my grandfather say about this? They had a talk, they have a difficult life, they have to live in a separate society, and yet we have everything put on the plate for us, and we are still crying. Racism, we are still, and racism is there, don't get me wrong, I'm not naive, but why we cannot speak to our young people? Why we cannot give time for them? Why do they need to carry a knife and carry a gun? And we say, oh, society has left them. Ready? If society has left them in 2021, why about those in the 19th century and the 18th century that, that went through all the colonization and slave trade? What would they be saying to us now? We got no excuse. Wake up, step up. I came here as a young man, a black man as well, and by God's grace, I am where I am by the grace of God today. I didn't come up with all these excuses. I didn't get into gang and, and use it as an excuse. So if you are in gang, ask yourself this question now. Is that, is that what my forefathers who went through everything, double of the of what even if you face all these challenges thing now? It's not good enough to be carrying out the carry gun. Put those things down and be the best you can be. God has given you talent. Use it to have a positive impact in the society. Because there are three places you can end up. In prison, in hospital, or six feet under, which is the graveyard. Your choice to avert that from happening to you. This is for the young people as well. Preach it. You scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I literally... <laughs> I don't know if to call you preach, teach, pastor, just earnest, I don't know. That's what <laughs> <laughs> Mentor, like coach, the whole every name available to be named. Thank you so much for Welcome. sitting down with me and allowing us to um, hear your story and your advice. So much useful information that you shared with us. So thank you again. Um, we I really appreciate it. We appreciate it also. Please remember, like, share and subscribe. Um, if you want to hear a little bit more, uh, but that's us for today. Thank you again for watching. Thank you, Ernest. Okay. Um, this is North Speaks Out, and Ernest has spoken today. And so we're asking you, Wahura. Wahura. Okay, which means, are you listening? Of course. <laughs> <laughs>